Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. My name is uh, Christopher Gogula. I work for Westlake Epoxy, former Hexion and, uh, Coatings and Composites. And today I would like to present to you uh, our flame retardant solutions for uh, mass production in mobility. And uh, I think it goes without saying that uh, all kind of mobility applications is where the flame retardancy is basically essential. You cannot go without it. And while you can find uh, individual material or material classes that are exceptional in terms of either flame retardancy or mechanical performance, when you want a combination of flame retardancy performance, uh, design flexibility, and even corrosion resistance, composites is really the way to go. So with that said, uh, Westlake Epoxy has a broad portfolio and we um, have several, basically several material groups, and that is phenolic resins. This is the basic, uh, let's say, golden standard in flame retardancy for composite or, or um, duroplastic applications. And you, you are probably aware of many phenolic resins that are on the market. They are inherently flame retardant. Where our uh, specific uh, resin system is different from uh, the legacy solutions is, is that it has a very low volatile content and basically is free of formaldehyde, which is the major concern with respect to health and safety when processing phenolics. Next up, if you prefer epoxy resins or if you need the very best performance or surface quality, we also uh, have liquid resins which contain liquid frame retardants and therefore are really easy to process in typical composite applications. They are characterized also by long work life, so can be processed by hand as well. And uh, they typically have the best surface quality of them all. And if you want kind of the best of both worlds, being the very good flame retardancy and still a very good uh, mechanical performance, we also have uh, field systems. And um, they have the uh, ability to, let's say, project the standard um, performance of the epoxy resins while still having uh, properties like high TG and potentially high reactivity. These are then compatible with several processes like liquid composite molding, filament winding, and also pre -prec. Uh, If we think about where or what kind of processes you would use these resins or where you would use them in the application, phenolics cover uh, broad, they are not filled, so you can use them basically with most, uh, most composite applications being uh, pre -prec, the typical um, usage, but you can also pull through them uh, in a fast cure uh, system or use RTM, LCM. Also, we have SMC possibility here for this uh, flexibility of forming. And uh, when we go to the, to the epoxy resins, the liquid resins are typical for infusion, hard, hand layup, RTM, and so on. And the field epoxy resins can also be processed, processed with uh, liquid composite molding, filament winding, but also processes, simple processes like hand layup. And we position our systems with respective to the markets. For automotive market, we would uh, recommend our new phenolics, our field epoxy resins, and for aeronautic and marine systems, these are typically uh, liquid epoxy or phenolic, and uh, that also depends on the process that you would like to use. So, starting with uh, aeronautic and marine uh, applications, uh, Westlake Epoxy has a broad portfolio of resins. You probably all touched, touched a Westlake port Epoxy resin when you are flying in a, in a plane. Most of the interior is covered with either phenolic resins or um, brominated or, or halogenated um, epoxy resins. And however, I would like to uh, turn your attention to our uh, RTM or the infusion system, which is the Epon Flamex 9630. And I would like to present it to you in more detail. The first benefit is it's already a qualified system in aerospace, mainly uh, for uh, helicopter seats and also some other applications. But uh, it has a very broad um, processing flexibility in that you can use hand layup because you have a long uh, work life with a liquid system. Uh, it doesn't contain any uh, toxic, acutely toxic or volatile components, so there is no uh, need for special EHS uh, procedures. 
and uh, you also get high or, or long long injection window, low viscosity, meaning it's very good to, to use it in infusion at very low or moderate temperatures. Infusion like 40 degrees C is not a problem. And last but not least, um, because you can build up the green strength of the resin system quite fast, you can use it in uh, RTM uh, molding for best surface quality and then uh, with a post curing. So this resin is uh, qualified in aerospace and it fulfills the norm, the norms uh, typical there like uh, Farjar CS uh, 12853, which is basically a vertical burn and also toxicity tests and the corresponding Boeing standard as well as the UL94 vertical burn where it can achieve a V0 classification at a minimum of four millimeters. And the achievable TG in this case would be around 90 to 100 degrees Celsius with the, when it's fully cured. Um, for marine applications or for general composite or industrial applications, we also have a dedicated system called Epon Flamex 5546. And it's also qualified uh, for lifeboats, where you have the special set of norms, uh, mainly from the International Maritime Organization. And this norm defines basically a set of tests that need to be fulfilled. This being an ignition test with a cone calorimeter, followed by, and, and then there is um, the, like a flaming test, typical for other applications, with a blue flame, very high temperature where there is no burn through and uh, no fire spread of the resin. So it's also suitable for uh, industrial applications where flame spread would be the biggest concern. Um, it's infusible and it can be cured at relatively mild temperatures of around 90 to 110 degrees C. Post cure, of course, is also possible. And uh, yeah, it can be used in a variety of uh, systems. We have tested like five millimeters glass panels. They do not burn, they don't show burn through and no flame spread uh, whatsoever. So now if we want to go really into high throughput manufacturing uh, where parts are basically made in a few minutes most, we would Think about automotive, of course, and this is where our resins can fulfill both the flame retardancy and high throughput needs. Namely, we have a broad portfolio of uh, systems that are suitable for all the battery cover or parts of the of the battery enclosures, being the cover itself, the, the tray or the underbody protection. And uh, here we recommend our Eponol 6921, which is a fast cure phenolic system that does not contain free formaldehyde. And we also have an LCM uh, resin. It's a field system called Epicode Track 6240, for example, for the other body protection for the best mechanical performance. Um, starting with the phenolic resin, um, it's a very robust system uh, that's um, basically an acid catalyzed technology where we have a combination of two catalysts that can be fine tuned, the, the concentration of them can be fine tuned to fine tune the reactivity and the open time or the working time. We also have a suitable uh, internal mold release. And the most important part, probably when thinking about phenolics, is the um, volatiles or f free formaldehyde, and this system is basically free of uh, formaldehyde. We measure this much lower than the occupational limit. You can process it in typical liquid uh, processes and also pultrusion, and uh, we also have some results on the automotive uh, FST tests. So, uh, again, free formaldehyde, the biggest issue with phenolic resins. We have tested it in kind of the worst case scenario in our um, application, and we found out that when we compare it to the occupational limits or the average limits, we are about one order of magnitude lower than the most uh, stringent requirement coming from Germany. So there is basically no, no free formaldehyde that is being released during production and definitely not during uh, use of the product. Now, um, to compare the phenolic, our phenolic resin with like incumbent material, we have devised a test method where we use standard aluminum, the, the, the first or the legacy uh, technology, and uh, 
epox uh, sorry uh, ATH filled polyester and we made a burn test with a with a burner at 1400 degrees celsius and we noted that uh, the legacy technology be it aluminum or um, ATH polyester they basically can survive about two minutes of this, uh, of this um, flaming, whereas the phenolics can stand, withstand more than 10 minutes. And uh, the, we just st stopped the test at this point because there was no burn through and um, the mechanical performance was there. Now, if you think about uh, actual use case where you might have, might have also issues with abrasion during driving, the second protocol, the protocol B, we implemented the same procedure, but with an intermittent sandblasting of the uh, flamed surface. And then we noticed that uh, aluminum cannot really uh, cope well with sandblasting combined with temperature. ATH polyester a little bit better, but the phenolic can basically outperform these in every single aspect. And it's basically can survive three times as much punishment as the incumbent materials. And you can achieve this at a relatively low thickness to save the cost around two to three millimeter. And also uh, we have um, uh, confirmation that the material will um, fulfill the norms required by automotive being the bonfire test or the UL2596 or the thermal runaway test. Um, at these thicknesses, there is no problem um, fulfilling these requirements. Now, when we move to, you may be swayed from phenolics or you may prefer to use epoxy systems or you need more mechanical performance. We have a field system that we um, position for like, for example, the underbody of the electric battery. And here we would recommend or we recommend to use, for example, liquid composite molding. Uh, it's still relatively simple to, to make big parts with it, and you don't have a long um, injection or a long travel paths for the resin. So you can either make it in the form itself or prepare the stack and the liquid resin and then transfer it into the form. Um, the liquid system contains solid frame retardants, so we had to kind of find the golden middle between the reactivity, the viscosity, and the performance. And we found out that uh, with a certain mixture, we are able to obtain very high quality composites, also very good surface quality. And you can see on the SEM picture on the lower left that it's, we are even able to infiltrate the individual fiber filaments with the flame retardants. So there is no visible um, no visible agglomeration of the, of the flame retardants, meaning that you still have the bulk of the material which is flame retardant. Uh, it's also um, similar to non-field resin with respect to the um, uh, injection window and the viscosity, so it's easy to process in typical um, automotive uh, applications. And last and foremost, you are able to make relatively thick samples with it 8 millimeter uh, panels that showed very good performance, very good surface quality, and no, no um, dry spots or, or filtration. Um, the system is based on our incumbent uh, non-flame retardant fast cure system, which is the Epicode Track 6170. And we compared both the non-flame retardant and the flame retardant uh, to see how the performance stacks up. And we basically saw that um, most of the performance parameters are the same or within the measurement error. There might be minimal differences in like flexural strength or ILSS. However, if you think about things like uh, density, fillers are of course heavier. However, in the final composite, that doesn't really make a difference. There is just like 2% increase in, in density. And uh, most importantly, for high throughput manufacturing, you would also probably need an internal mold release. And this is not so simple with um, 
with field uh, epoxy systems. So we have made a large screening set of um, different internal mold releases and different concentrations. And we found a suitable solution that works very well with this particular system. So you can have a comparable mold, mold release performance like the non-field system. Add to that uh, high TG. Typical, the automotive need would be around 120 degrees C and a cure time of two to three minutes. And you have a high throughput system that gives best of both worlds, high performance, high reactivity, and high flame retardancy. Of course, it doesn't contain any uh, toxic components or highly toxic components or volatiles. And yeah. Last but not least, um, as a kind of a emergent technology, we are also looking at uh, improving the flame retardancy or imparting flame retardancy on hydrogen tanks. And here, we also recommend a field system, which is then uh, a bit different. This is the Epicode 6540. And uh, the idea behind it is that you can use it with normal um, curing, or with the same curing agent you would use for curing the uh, full tank. So you don't need to do a second step processing. You could, for example, coat your uh, or prepare your carbon layer for the mechanical performance and overcoat it with glass or or um, or carbon fiber field uh, with with um, impregnated with the field epoxy resin to impart increased uh, flame retardancy. And that's all based on the R134 norm which requires a degree of flame retardancy for the hydrogen tanks. And the way we tested it so far is uh, we took a small or a um, thin um, flame retardant resin um, panel with glass, and we just uh, flamed it at 1,000 degrees C for around 15 to 30 minutes. And we saw that already at this thickness, you can uh, limit the, the temperature that's reaching the carbon layer to below 400 degrees Celsius. Now, the, the system, of course, is low viscosity and can be processed in a long, it has a long open time, so there is no issue with um, premature gelation and, um, or the reactivity. We have suitable um, curing agents, be it amine or anhydride, and they work very well. <clears throat> Okay, and um, yeah, we also tested the UL94, and it's basically at the typical um, thickness you would get the vertical burn and the V0 um, quality. So, um, to sum the portfolio up, whether you are looking for phenolics or epoxy resins, uh, we have a kind of an overview of the performance. So, if you would like to have the very best um, flame retardant portfolio, or flame retardant performance, but are able to um, maybe make some, some uh, concessions on the mechanical performance and so on, then you definitely can go with the phenolic resin, which is now more benign with respect to health and safety. If you want the very best um, mechanical performance with the added benefit of flame retardancy, uh, you would probably want to go with a liquid epoxy resin. And if you want kind of the best of the both worlds, so good flame retardancy and still good mechanical performance, we recommend the uh, field epoxy resins for your use. And um, yeah, so what I would like to, you to take away from this presentation is uh, that uh, as Westlake Epoxy is uh, the best partner that you can <laughs> Hope for for um, flame retardant uh, resin portfolio. We have a very broad portfolio. We are um, our history goes back to the first epoxy or phenolic resins. So you are of course getting this with it, and uh, we have a portfolio of uh, resins that are already qualified in the respective applications, be it automotive, uh, aerospace, or marine, and we also have a solutions that can help you impart flame retardancy in other sectors like um, industrials or uh, hydrogen tanks. And with all that, I would like to invite you to our booth, which is just down the aisle, the G62. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, I will also be available at the speaker uh, area. 
And we have a few um, samples um, of flame retardant composites here with us. You are more than welcome to take a look or have discussions with our experts. And uh, with that said, thank you very much for your attention. And I think we have time for a question or two. OK, if that's not the case, then please feel free to visit us at our booth or in the speaker area. Thank you very much for your attention. And goodbye. <laughs>